Not long after the sun starts its journey across the big West Texas sky, an old yellow dog school bus bumps its way down one of the only paved streets in one of the most remote school systems in Texas. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cowboy hats line the tops of lockers, and the largest class could fit in a minivan. This could be the opening scene of a movie, but it's just the start of another school day in Valentine. Five times five equals 25. Valentine, Texas, once a thriving municipality dotted with strong buildings built by tough people. Now they're simply sad reminders of the good old days. Valentine has always struggled with small townhood. Now it struggles to just hang on. It's the quietest place that I know. Serenity, there's no rush to get anywhere. It's very isolated. It's an 80 mile round trip for us to get a gallon of gas, a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread. It's a, we're isolated. And so you have to make sure what you have will work or you do without. The last soldiers standing are the post office, a dentist office, and the school. There are whispers here that the post office too may slip into the pages of the history of a town that was. So the school is really the only reason this place is still around. From kindergarten through 12th grade, there are only 44 kids here helping to hold together a West Texas educational cornerstone that's managed to keep the doors open for 100 years. The school is the community. We have an over 800 square mile district because it's just such an isolated area. It's been the center of the community forever and this is what the community wants, the school. Doug Cook is superintendent of the Valentine ISD. You might remember Doug, a few years ago, he was the six-man football coach and principal at the Blackwell, Texas School. And here, just like there, Doug wears a lot of hats, but that's just how things get done when your entire student body is 15 times smaller than the Allen, Texas High School Band. I get to be superintendent, principal, homeless liaison, federal person. Uh, I get to go deal with a kid in elementary that didn't do their, their work or got upset about something. Uh, I may end up being the student council sponsor this year. It's whatever has to be done to see which one of these fertilizers grows best. Chewy Calderon grew up here, and in this get-it-done community where everybody does double duty, Chewy is also the town's mayor and the delivery man for the tiny towns and communities separated by 100 miles or more. I work for FedEx, and uh, of course I teach half-time. I'm out by lunch. I mean, I, I go deliver and pick up packages in Marfa, and then I go to Presidio, which is like 95 miles from here. It's very enjoyable because I get to help these people that live out in remote areas out in the middle of nowhere. Chewy's also been a teacher here for 21 years. And this year, Mr. Calderon's science class has one student. But that's not unusual. It's just part of the personal attention that intricately weaves together the lives in this community. The main thing I love is the kids, you know. I was born and raised here and, and uh, went to school through this school, went to Saw Ross, and uh, the kids here are just awesome. And my reward for teaching is watching them go off and making good citizens. We have a lot of time for that one-on-one. -on -one. 
Our biggest class is nine, and we have some classes, grades with one or two. It's very much individualized instruction. Okay, we're going to talk about attitudes. Good attitudes make for what? Valentine Schools, this is Rita. Rita Weigard is school secretary. She grew up here too and graduated top in her class. Well, I graduated in 1982, right there on that stage. My graduating class was one, but I still had to make the grade. I was valedictorian. They have all the latest tools of teaching here, computers and internet and modern technical ties to the rest of the world. They don't have all the things you find in some schools but they have what they need, and they have what's important. We rarely deal with the things that they deal with in the big schools. I think we've had one fight in two years. It's, it's just, it's a different lifestyle. It's very laid back. It's sometimes they'll say, well, you kick back to the 60s. Parents are still very supportive of the school and uh, those things. So yeah, it's a good place to be. So it's really a community of love, and I think that's why they named it appropriately, because we are a really tight community there's not much here, but we have each other. It's a tiny town in a vast desert where nothing is close to anything because nothing is the only thing around. But at the Valentine ISD, things are keeping the same pace they have for more than a century. The town may be disappearing around them, and the world may be racing by out on Highway 90. But as long as there are children on these ranches and kids willing to learn, the Valentine School will be in session. We've been here for, for many years, and every year people say, well, this town is going to die, and they're going to close the school down. And I've been here 60 years, and they still haven't done it. We're holding our own. Doug could I offer you a superintendent job in Dallas or Houston? No, they have more lawyers than I have students and I'm not interested in that.